Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we read Parasha Vayeshev and this parasha starts talking about the life of Joseph, Joseph Hatzadik, and Joseph, who was the 11th son of Jacob and his son with Rahel, had a very hard life. He had no easy life. He became an orphan of his mother when he was young. Uh, his brothers had envy towards him. They hated him. Uh, he was the favorite child of Jacob. And so because of this, they didn't like him. He was a beautiful in appearance and that made it even worse. And um, eventually he was uh, going to be killed by them. They sold him as a slave. He went down to Egypt and he was uh, living in the house of Potiphar, who was um, like a right hand of the Pharaoh at that time in Egypt. And he made him very rich. He was a, an incredible administrator of his home, but his wife, uh, had a liking to to Joseph and she tried to seduce him and uh, he ran away from her and she made a whole uh, thing, a whole issue that he was going to take advantage of her. You know, today they call it sexual harassment, that he was taking advantage of her and because of this he ended up in jail. And uh, his time in jail was not an easy time either, but there was something that Je that Joseph had that helped him a lot in his life, and that's called grace, called Hain. He had Hain. He had something in him that he, people liked him. And uh, he was put in jail, and, the, and, the, and one of the prisoner wards had a liking to him, and he put him in the same cell as the chief cupbearer and the chief baker of the pharaoh, who ended up in jail because they had, they were accused of having plotted to kill Pharaoh. And one day Joseph wakes up and he sees them and their faces are gloomy. And he goes to them and he says, uh, he saw them and behold, they were troubled. And he asked them, why are your faces sad today? And this changed the whole history of, of Joseph, just because he was worried and he looked uh, preoccupied about somebody else, this made the whole difference in his life. So as you know the story, they had dreams, they had troublesome dreams, uh, one of them dreamt that he was serving wine to the, um, to the Pharaoh and, uh, and, and Pharaoh took the wine and he drank it and the other one uh, had a dream that he had a basket in his head with the a, with a fruits and everything and at the end his head was going to be cut off and the birds were gonna eat his head. So uh, Joseph interpreted their dreams and sadly to, to, the, to the baker, he said to the baker, I'm sorry, but uh, you're not gonna make it out alive you're, because you're not gonna get out of here alive. And that's how it was. And to the wine, um, uh, the wine uh, person that took care of the wine of the Pharaoh, he said to him, you're fine. And uh, from then on, his whole life changed. So the narrative in this Torah portion is full of details. It, 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 it's extremely detailed, in showing us how Joseph is with other people, how detailed he's with other people. And we see that his personality was a very keen personality. He was very aware of other people's problems and other people's lives. And uh, ordinarily, People are not like that, like this. People usually are not making connections. People are not looking at this person and connecting to this other person. And he saw him like this today. And because of this, he's like this tomorrow. People usually are not so into the, into the details of other people's lives. But we see that Joseph was a wise man and he sees in every person and everything its unique nature and distinct quality. So he had a very distinct personality. He was very detailed and very sensitive to other people's needs. And the Pirkeavot comes to teach us many things. Pirkeavot, the ethics of the fathers, the Mishnah, teaches us a lot about ethic a way of being and really Joseph personified the Mishnah. He personified the Pirkei Avot. There's a Mishnah 
4.15 that teaches, it says that Rabbi Matia, the son of Harash, would say, be first to greet every man, be a tail to lions rather than a head to, fo to foxes. And what he's telling us here, what he's teaching us, is that we should always be the first person to go and greet some, another person. We should never be waiting. You know, some people come into a room or to a party or into a restaurant and they see a friend or they see people they know and they like look the other way around to, and they're like waiting for other people to approach them and say hi to them. Maybe it's because they, they're, uh, they're uh, timid or uh, uh, shy and, or whatever the reason is or insecure or whatever the reason is and they look away and they're not they don't approach people to say hi to them they're always waiting for another person to come to them and this Mishnah really is teaching us the other way around that the ethical thing to do that a human being should stand up you see someone you know go and, and say hi to them go it's a nice thing to do and it's said about Rabbi Yohanan ben Sakai who was a great Talmudic a sage who would always be learning he had the Gemara on his face he would always be learning and praying and he would not be like losing time with with the mundane things in life it says of him that he was such a holy man that he was even able to listen to the conversations of angels but nevertheless he had this trait in him that Every time he saw a person that he knew, he would go running to greet them and, and show them importance. Because what this shows is that when you go and you say hi to somebody, first, it shows that for you, that person matters. That person is important. And then, in Avot 115, Shammai would say, receive every man with a pleasant countenance. So not only should we go and say hi to a person first, like run and say hi, it's a mitzvah, we should also do it with a pleasant countenance. Even if we're having the worst day of our lives, every time we say hi to somebody, we should say it with a smile in our face. Even if we're not feeling it in our heart, we should show it in the face. And I remember Rebetzin Esther John Grice, I once heard her and she said, you know, your face is not private property. Your face is public property. You don't see your face, but other people see your face. It's, it's, it's public. If this is what people see when they see you, they see your face. So why should you make a bad face in front of other people? What's their fault? It's not their fault. They shouldn't be watching a not nice face. So she says that, uh, that you should make people feel that you're happy to see them. Even, even if you're not feeling it, you know, fake it till you make it. Because if, even if in your heart you're not feeling, this is not the feeling you have, if your action is a, is a cordial action, is a nice action towards other people, eventually you'll start to feel it in your heart. And then in Avot 3.12, there, there's, it goes a step further, and it says that Mishnah says, receive every man with joy. So one is telling us, go and say hello first. The other one is telling us, even if you're not feeling the best that day, don't show it. When you say hi to somebody, show a nice smile, show a nice face. But here, this Mishnah is telling us, and also receive every, every person with joy. What does it mean? If I'm, if I'm not feeling joyful, how can I feel joyful? How can I go up to somebody and say, and, and show that I'm joyful and feel that I'm joyful? And it says, because a person can show a pleasant face while his heart feels the opposite, in order to be joyful, one must actually direct his soul to joy. So how do we direct our soul to joy? It's very simple. It's very simple. It's what you think is what you feel. So if you see a person and you're not feeling joyful, and even it's a person that you don't like so much, you know, so it's even harder to feel joyful, you can always put a nice thought in your head that will arouse joyfulness. Like to say, you know, Baruch Hashem, I can see this person today. He's, he's in this world. I'm so happy he's good. He's alive, he's healthy. Just to think like that, or that I'm healthy and I'm alive and I can come and say hi to a person. Just to think this way will change the whole way you feel. And then, so that eventually he really feels glad to see this person. So again, I'm going to repeat. So we learn that, the, that the, we should always be the first person to run and say hello to somebody. And this reminds me of my mother-in-law. Uh, may she rest in peace. She used to say hi to people in a way that people felt that they were her best friend. 
it didn't matter the age they were, if they were young, if they were old, if they were little, if they were kids, it didn't matter. When you, when my mother-in-law saw a person, she would run to say hi to them. She would approach them with joy and with pleasantness and with a big smile and a big laugh. And she would like, the only thing that mattered in that moment was the person she was saying hi to. It's like nobody else mattered. There was nothing else happening in the world. And this is the way she made people feel. I remember that in the Hersheba, all these people came and they were all crying. I tell you, every age. And my mother-in-law was 80 years old. And everybody said the same thing. La Señora Glais, every time she saw me, she made me feel like a million bucks. She made me feel like I was the most important person in her life. And this is um, unbelievable if we're able to do this for a person because it can really change a person's life. We don't know the extent of a nice face towards someone else, what it can achieve. So we should smile and, and we should be gracious to others even if we don't feel like it. We should treat everyone with joy and grace, no matter who they are. There's people that if a person is not someone important, then they don't even bother to say hi to that person. It's, that person has nothing to give to me, so I'm not gonna waste my time. This is not the Jewish way. This is not the ethical way. And also, number four, being joyful and gracious in every single circumstance, since all comes from God. So when a person understands that everything comes from God, that that person you're going to go and approach and say hi to is also a child of Hashem, it's also in this world, it's a person that also has something important to give to the world, then you're going to start looking at people with different eyes. So there's a story that I heard many years ago that is very relevant to, to this. And it's about a slaughterhouse in Argentina. And there were these uh, rabbis that used to go there once a month to butcher the, the cows to make it to have kosher meat. And um, one day the owner of the slaughterhouse was closing the slaughterhouse, it was already eight o'clock at night and he was closing when he came to the guard he said goodbye to him and he said now it's time to go we can go and the guard said to the owner you know what I don't feel comfortable there's something wrong and he said what's wrong he says you know the two butchers that came this morning I don't think they came out I, I don't think they have left and he says no that's impossible for sure they left no no I don't think he said so why do you say that he says because these two people Every time they come in the morning, they stop, they say hi to me, they know my name, they ask me about my family, they ask me how I'm doing. They really take their time to talk to me and make me feel good. And every time they leave at night, they also stop by the, by the gate and they also say good night to me and they also wish me a good night and they give me a nice smile. And today I haven't seen them say goodbye. So I'm sure they haven't left the place. So they went to look for them and it happened to be that they had been locked inside of the freezer. And uh, if, if it wasn't because they were pleasant to the guard, they would have closed the, 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 store, the slaughterhouse and, and then the next day they would have found them dead, frozen into the, in the freezer. So you never know what a smile does. You don't know what being kind to other people does. And, the, and this story is very relevant and it's very similar to what Joseph was. He, he would never miss a beat and he would, would always be nice to everybody. So Joseph's conduct in prison and on other uh, moments of his life brought all these teachings to life. And... Um, and, and Joseph had every reason to be resentful. He had every reason to be resentful. He had been put in jail by this important person. And now he was with other workers of Pharaoh. He could have been nasty to them. He could have been nasty to everybody. But nevertheless, he was always nice to everybody, no matter what. And people found pain in him charm. So Joseph's story is always uh, read close to Hanukkah. It's read uh, in the weeks before Hanukkah. And Hanukkah is a festival of lights. And uh, in a separate talk that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave, he connected the story of Joseph to the duty we all share as Jews, which is to bring light to the world. We're lamplighters. We come here to light, light up the world in fire, to bring passion, to bring joy, to bring love, to bring connectedness to Hashem. So the menorah, the candles of the menorah are, 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 
our, our conduct with our fellow men. So they rem remind us that we have to be this way with our fellow men. This is the way we should treat other people with light, with warmth, with love, always. And in a world of technology, today we're bombarded by technology. People are always with the phone in their, in their face. Like you walk in the streets and they're looking at their phones. You're in the, in, the, in the train, they're looking at the phones. They're in a line waiting to get on a plane. They're looking on the phones. They get on the plane and they're still looking on the phone. It, it's very hard to get this connection, this human connection today. But nevertheless, a nice smile of a person, a nice hello, a nice how are you, will never, never replace, uh, the, 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 the smart one, phone will never replace this warmth, will never uh, come to bring people to feeling unique and important and loved. A phone won't make you feel like that. Only another human being can make you feel like that. So the sages of the Pirkei Avot and the story of Joseph teach us that even in the darkest and most hellish places like prison where Joseph was put in, we can always reach out to another person with a smile, with a caring and, and a helping hand. And in doing so, we can brighten up the world in a way that no device could ever uh, bring light to the world and it's more they need a battery and the light you create is eternal it doesn't need to be recharged so i wish you a beautiful week and remember live a little higher thank you <laughs>